Hi everyone, I test out so many different skincare products every single week, but some of them I love so much they make it into my everyday skincare routine. And it's been a while since I've filmed an updated skincare routine, so I thought I would do that today. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. I would love it if at some point in this video you are finding it helpful, please consider clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. So I'm going to be sharing with you both my morning and my evening skincare routines. You may think that there are certain products in my rather long-winded morning routine that are unnecessary, and I would completely agree with you. So there are certain products in my morning skincare routine that do the same thing as other products that are also in my morning skincare routine, but I will talk you through those as I apply them to my skin. How I tend to work when I'm testing out new products, I don't like to substitute immediately. I put the new product in my routine for a few weeks to see if I really like that new product. If I know it's definitely going to stay for a considerable amount of time in my skincare routine, I then substitute out the products that do a similar thing because nobody wants to be adding 10 products to their skin every morning. We don't have time and also it's unnecessary. You're spending money unnecessarily. That was a long word for me. <laughs> So firstly, I'd like to thank Sleep & Glow for sponsoring this video today. You may have heard me talk about Sleep & Glow quite recently on my channel. I've spoken about them a lot in both non-sponsored content and also sponsored content as well. I would not be without their pillow and I love it for numerous reasons. The first one, and I think the most important one, it's seriously comfortable. It was designed by orthopedists so you get in the correct position, you are well supported and you get a really good night's sleep and sleep is incredibly important for regenerating the skin overnight whilst we're at rest. But the Sleep & Glow pillow can also help prevent those creasing wrinkles. If you have a normal pillowcase and you're a side sleeper like me, you tend to sleep and your skin gets all bunched up between you and the pillowcase. It creates a lot of friction, which then creates a lot of irritation and inflammation first thing in the morning. You can get a lot of puffiness on the surface of the skin, but you can also get a lot of creasing wrinkles and you might turn up to work with those creases still there because the older we get, the longer those creases take to disappear. Well, that is completely eradicated with the Sleep & Glow pillow because it has little indentations within the foam. So you can quite comfortably sleep on your side without any of your face or your skin touching the pillow, which has completely helped how much puffiness I have on my skin first thing in the morning and I have zero creasing wrinkles. And zero creasing wrinkles means less dynamic wrinkles and less static wrinkles over time. So that is why it is featured within this skincare video. I take it as one of my staple skincare items. It's an investment, but it has been so worth it. If you're thinking of buying a Sleep & Glow pillow, they do have an offer on at the moment. I will link all the details in the description box. They also have a 30-day sleep trial. So if you do get it and then you really don't like it within that 30-day period, you can ship it back to them for your money back. So once I've woken up in the morning and eventually got out of bed, which for me is really quite quick, I'm a morning person. It really annoys everybody else. Anyway, I like to clean my skin. I used to just splash it with water first thing in the morning. I found that the older I get and the drier my skin is and the more flaky my skin is, that just does not work for me anymore. So I do like to use either a cleansing balm or an oil cleanser. I don't use both of these products. I tend to alternate depending on how I feel that morning. So the two products I've been really enjoying using for a considerable amount of time now, my cleansing balm is from Elemis. It's the Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. I apply this to completely dry skin, massage it in, then wet my hands, massage over it again to emulsify the balm, and then remove it with a washcloth. Or I use my Purito From Green Cleansing Oil. Again, apply this to dry skin, massage, then wet my hands, massage again to emulsify the oil, and either splash this off with water 
or use a washcloth to remove. Only use one of these in the morning and I only cleanse once. I do not double cleanse in the morning. I just find it is just not necessary for me in the morning. I don't have any makeup on my skin and my skincare residue from the night before would come off with just a splash of water. So this isn't a step that everybody needs to do. I'm a big advocate for just splashing your face with water first thing in the morning. But if you feel your skin needs a little bit of something extra, these are lovely products. So then I move on to my Maysama serum. This is the only serum that is claims tested to use in conjunction with LED devices. I've spoken about this numerous times, so I'm not gonna bore everybody, but I use this to boost the efficacy and to really speed up the results of my LED devices. So once I've let the Maysama serum sink into my skin for at least 10 to 15 minutes, I then use my LED devices from Current Body. I have the face mask and also the neck and deck perfecter. You don't need both if you don't want to, but as far as I'm concerned, these are staples in my skincare routine. I would now never be without them because I've seen the results that these give. For me personally, and this is just opinion based, I think these do just as much, if not more, than my Tretinoin prescription that I use in the evening. That is how much I rate these. I just think they are amazing. So just like tretinoin, these brighten and even the skin tone, they reduce hyperpigmentation, really rejuvenate the skin, speed up skin healing, decrease wrinkles and fine lines, they smooth out my skin texture, reduce skin crepiness, firm and increase suppleness and plumpness, and reduce inflammation and scarring. If you have a lot of scarring or pigmentation on your skin, this is definitely one of those avenues that I would point you down. Once I've done with my LED devices, I actually like to rinse off whatever residue is left from the Maysama serum. And I hear you gasp. I know it's quite a pricey serum to begin with, so why am I washing it off practically 25 minutes after I've just put it on? Well, it's done its job as far as I'm concerned. Some of it that has actually sank into the skin will remain doing its job all day. However, I really struggle to not over apply the Maysama serum. And because of that, some of it dries on the surface of the skin and creates a film. So when I put the rest of my products on top, it tends to pill. So I like to stop that from happening altogether just by rinsing my skin with just lukewarm water and patting it dry. Now you all know what's coming next. This has been in my morning and my evening skincare routine for a really long time and I've spoken about it numerous times on my channel also. This is from Neod and it's the Superoxide Dismutase Saccharide Mist. This is a great antioxidant, but it's also great for hydration as well. I like to spray three to four pumps of this into the palms of my hands and then spread it over my skin. I find I get the best use out of it that way. Of course, some of it is going to sink into the palm of my hands, but I'm still getting more out of the product than I would do if I sprayed this directly on my face. I think they've really improved the mist on this and I'm much, much happier with how it comes out of the bottle. However, if I was to spray this directly onto my skin, I would probably probably be using around about seven pumps, whereas in the palm of my hand, I'm only spraying four. So yes, I'm gonna be losing some into the palms of my hands, but I'm still only using four pumps rather than using the seven that I would need to coat my skin with exactly the same amount of stuff using the mist. Immediately after, while my skin is still slightly damp, I like to apply the Medicaid Hydrate B5 Intense. I adore this serum. It is amazing. It makes my skin feel plump, youthful, and it does not have a tacky residue that sits on the surface of the skin like a lot of other hyaluronic acid products. This is jam-packed full of not only those hydrating ingredients, but also natural moisturizing factors as well, which will really look after the skin barrier and aid the skin barrier working in a very healthy way, really locking in that hydration and preventing transepidermal water loss. So here's the new arrival into my morning skincare routine and I will be replacing two products that I have in my morning skincare routine if I decide to keep this one, which at the moment is a definite because I am loving it. Not only is this a great antioxidant, so it will help to protect my skin against free radical damage throughout the day, but this is also a great hydrator and also packs the skin full of nourishment. Now, if I do decide to keep this, I will 
will be substituting both of these products for this one. So my superoxide dismutase saccharide mist and also my Medicaid Hydrate B5 Intense. There will be no need for both of these anymore. So I will be substituting them for this one product, which makes sense to me. But at the moment I'm using all three just until I decide whether I love this one enough to get rid of those two. <laughs> so the Neod Survival Zero contains a lot of glycerin to really fill the skin full of hydration. It also contains superoxide dismutase, which appears in abundance in my superoxide dismutase saccharide mist, which is why I won't need that product anymore if I do decide to keep this one. It also contains pycnogenol, which is a great antioxidant. You can get that as a standalone product from The Ordinary if you want something without all the other added ingredients in there as well. But this one also contains squalane and jojoba oil to really pack your skin full of nourishment and look after that skin barrier. This sinks into the skin really well. It doesn't leave an oily slip or any sort of residue on the surface. I think it sinks in effortlessly and within seconds I'm ready to apply my next product. And that next product is from Isntree and it's the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This is an SPF of 50 plus. It's so lovely. It's jam packed full of hyaluronic acid as well. So I'm getting a lot of hydration within the products that I've applied today, which for me is definitely needed during autumn and winter. And I will probably carry this on through into spring and summer as well. It is such a lovely SPF. It is so lightweight. It doesn't feel oily, it sinks into the skin effortlessly and leaves a glow on the surface, which I love. So I've always said that the last thing in your skincare routine should be your SPF and I stand by that. However, I do apply one more thing on top, but I don't use this as skincare, even though it is. I use this as a primer for my makeup because it sits on the skin like a primer. You don't have to seriously, vigorously rub this into the skin. It's not going to displace your SPF underneath it. So I think it's safe to add over the top as a moisturizer, as well as it being a primer as well. Now this is the hydration vaccine from Neod. I swear by this, it is full of those natural moisturizing factors to look after the skin barrier, but it's also full of silicones to really help smooth off the surface of the skin, making it the perfect canvas to apply all of your makeup products on top of. So that's it for my morning skincare routine. It's a little long-winded at this moment in time and there are some products in there that don't need to be in there, but hopefully I've managed to explain my thought process to everybody. I've actually only been using the Survival Zero for around about eight, nine days or so. So I'm not ready to say that this is the best product ever yet. I need to be using this for a few more weeks yet before I determine that. We keep it real on this channel. I have to be completely honest with everybody. So although I love this at the moment, I've kept my other two products in here just in case. And once I decide whether this is a definite keeper, those two products will either be removed or this one will be. So we will see. I will update you in a future video. Let's crack on with the evening routine, which is way simpler. <laughs> Okay, first things first, I always double cleanse in the evening using exactly the same products that I would cleanse my skin with in the morning. I don't buy anything special in just because it's my evening skincare routine, I use the same. So it's either the Purito from Green Cleansing Oil or the LMS Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. The only difference is I only cleanse once in the morning and I double up and cleanse twice in the evening. So apply the product, remove, apply the product, remove, just to make sure that all the SPF and my makeup is completely off my skin. Next product I use in an evening is a brand new product for me. It actually came in PR. I put it on my Instagram and somebody DM'd me and said, you are going to absolutely love that product. And they were right. I seriously do. This is the Rice Polish Classic. It's actually an enzyme exfoliant and uh, I've been pretty vocal with all the enzyme exfoliants that I've tried on my channel previously. Brutally so, I'm not a big fan of enzyme exfoliants. This is totally different. It doesn't ball up on the skin. It is gentle enough to use every single day with my tretinoin in the evening and 
that's unheard of for me. No irritation, no redness, no soreness, no flakiness. It is my new best friend. I absolutely love this. A little melodramatic, but it's the truth. So this makes my skin feel super soft and smooth in 15 seconds. You start off with wet skin, you add a little bit of powder to the palm of your hand and please do not add the same amount that I did. I added way too much, half the amount is absolutely fine. Add water to the powder, rub between your hands to create a lathery foam, get that on the skin, don't apply it around the eye area but everywhere else is absolutely fine. Massage for around about 15 seconds and rinse off and your skin will feel amazing. Love it. Of course you know this is going to make a second appearance in this video. This again is the Neod Superoxide Dismutase Saccharide Mist. I apply this exactly the same way that I would do in my morning routine and then move on to the next. Which is another brand new product from Tatcha which I have been absolutely loving. This is the Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair Cream. I have also tried the Tatcha The Dewy Skin Cream. Love this. However, it does contain quite a lot of essential oils, fragrance, and it does contain alcohol as well, which although is beautiful on my skin right at the very beginning because the other ingredients in here are lush, it doesn't suit my skin long-term throughout the day. And I was finding I was getting a little bit of dryness as we got towards the evening. So I've knocked this one on the head now, but this one is a definite keeper. It's a heavier consistency than the Dewy Skin Cream. It's got a similar look on the surface of the skin, which doesn't really matter in the evening because you're gonna to go to bed anyway, but it looks beautiful. It doesn't have any essential oils in there or any alcohol or any fragrance, and I just adore it. A little bit goes a long way. If I am after a lot of nourishment, I apply the tiniest bit more, but you only need a little bit. It's gonna last me a while. Again, it's a pricey product. I will let you know if I decide decide to repurchase this when it's all gone. However, I have a feeling that this will be a keeper. I'm really enjoying using it. It feels lovely. And then I use my Dermatica prescription. This is my prescription strength retinoid that I use in the evening. I always recommend that everybody have a retinoid in their skincare routine if your skin can tolerate it. It just so happens that I am on prescription strength. I've actually just downgraded from not 0.1% or 0.1% to 0.05% because although my skin was tolerating it quite well, I didn't think my skin looked as nice on 0.1% as it did on 0.05%. So I'm still getting the results that I want and my skin looks nicer on a lower strength. It just proves that a higher percentage isn't always better everybody's skin is different. So 0.05 uh, is the way that I'm going to be going in future. I love this. It does so much for my skin. Not only are retinoids clinically proven to speed up cell turnover, reducing wrinkles and fine lines, but they also improve the skin's health, reducing sun damage over time, improving and smoothing skin texture, reducing blemishes and acne, reducing hyperpigmentation, really evening out the skin tone, firming the skin and giving giving your skin that youthful glow. So it has everything in it that I am looking for in a skincare product for the evening. And uh, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. I always like to use the sandwich technique whenever I'm applying any sort of retinoid to my skin. So I applied my moisturizer. I let that dry down for at least 15 minutes before I applied my retinoid over the top. And then I'm sandwiching that in with my hydration vaccine from Neod, applying it in exactly the same way that I did in my morning routine. And finally, I never forget my lips. I always apply a very thin layer of the Dr. Sam's Flawless Lip Balm. This stuff is lovely. It is just lanolin and ceramides, and that is it. Gotta say, doesn't taste that nice the first time you apply it, but having used this now for way over a year, 
I'm used to it now and I actually quite enjoy it. <laughs> bit of a turnaround, I've done a bit of a 180 but I, I really like the taste of this now and I'd be disappointed if they covered up the flavour with something more synthetic. I like it and it really plumps my lips full of moisture and hydration and just makes them look smooth and plump which is exactly what I want. So I test out a lot of products all the time. I buy a lot of products to test out for you all. Plus I get quite a bit of skincare sent to me in PR. So it is highly likely that within the next few months there will be some shifts in my skincare routine, both morning and evening. Some additions, some subtractions, especially if I decide to take out the two products in my morning skincare routine, if I decide to keep the Survival Zero in there. Those two products do very, very similar things to the Survival Zero. So there's no need to have all three of them in my routine at once. Now you may be slightly surprised that some of the products that I've spoken about quite recently or a lot in the past don't feature in this skincare routine. It's just because I don't feel the need that my skin needs those products at the moment, needs those ingredients, or I have other products in my skincare routine that do a very similar thing. Now I am under no illusion that all of these products totaled up together cost a hefty sum. It just so happens that these are the products that I'm enjoying at the moment. That doesn't mean that you cannot get more affordable alternatives elsewhere. Do check out the skincare playlist because there are a lot of affordable skincare videos within there and you will find some really good alternatives for the products that I've been using in my routine today. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.